Thank you. Thanks so much. Let's give a big hand to Tim and to the veg, uh, yeah, the whole veg fest like movement. Tim. Thank you, Tim. Really, uh, really appreciate what's uh, what this is all about. So yeah, Madeline and I are uh, right now in the beginning of a two-month uh, vegan world circumnavigation lecture tour to, um, to, tr to again promote veganism uh, in Europe. We were just in Spain and Switzerland. We're on our way to India, China, Taiwan, and then back to and Hawaii and back to California. And um, one of the things I just want to share, I, I feel very fortunate, uh, like James also is doing a lot of traveling. The, the, the book that I wrote, how many of you are familiar with the World Peace Diet? Just so I have a feeling, a few of you. Yeah. Anyway, this book has been translated now into 16 languages, and so we're getting invited uh, to speak everywhere, in a sense. I mean, North and South America and Africa and the Middle East and Asia, many countries. And it's wonderful to see the vegan movement growing, but not only growing, I think deepening. And people are making the connections between speciesism, which is essentially, as you know, the attitude that humans are superior to animals and we have the right to exploit and oppress them however we want because we're superior. And, uh, and other uh, social justice issues like racism and sexism and ableism and heterosexism and classism and so forth. And so the World Peace Diet, I think, in many ways um, created a foundation for, for that uh, connection with social justice. And then I was the editor after that of a book. Casey Taft, who's supposed to be here, we partnered in writing that book. I mean, I, I'm the author, but he's the publisher. He, he has a, uh, a company called Vegan Publishers based in Boston, Massachusetts. He'll be here tomorrow. He just missed the plane. But um, the idea was to to try to connect uh, social justice issues with with animal justice issues, and so that's really, I think, the, the main um, topic of our of our time today here. And uh, I can say I'll say just a few words more, and then maybe we can go back and forth, and then we can maybe have a, 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 a dialogue with you folks if you have thoughts or questions. But I'll just say uh, the main point I, I make in the World Peace Diet. And it also, I think, comes through in the book Circles of Compassion, where, which I'm the editor of. So there's 29 other authors who are experts in racism and sexism and so forth, who are all vegans, that essentially we're never going to be successful in addressing these uh, social justice issues if we continue to ignore the violence and abuse of animals, for, primarily for food, you know, for food and other products and uses, that that is the underlying spinning fury at the core of our culture that we keep ignoring and trying to have a world of peace and freedom and justice and sustainability. It's never going to be possible because uh, as we sow, so shall we reap. Now this basic teaching uh, I spent, you know, quite a few years in, um, Zen in Zen centers and Zen monasteries as a Zen monk. And the basic teaching in all the world religions, the, the wisdom traditions of the world, is that whatever we want for ourselves, we should give to others. If I want to be free, it's not going to work if I enslave others. If I want to be loved, it's not going to work if I'm going to be violent and abuse them. So, so the whole idea is that we have these beings, which I, I know if you're in this room, you understand this. These beings that we refer to as animals are fully sentient beings, and their interests are to them as important as my interests are to me. They don't want to be locked in a room and live in their own excrement and have their babies stolen and have their milk stolen and their eggs stolen and their lives stolen and, uh, and be mutilated and so forth. Just like I wouldn't want a superior species to do that to me. But when we, when we hold these beings in our hand who would like to have mercy and be able to live their lives and we crush them, we steal their sovereignty, we destroy any possibility that they have to fulfill their natural yearnings, how can we expect to have a society of peace and freedom and justice for ourselves when we don't, we deny it to these other beings? This is, that this is so obvious. And yet we, in all the media, in all the television, radio, newspaper, does anyone talk about this? It's the most obvious thing. How can we, really, I, I just wonder, how do we tolerate living in a world where we're literally t abusing and killing billions, actually, of animals every single day, and yet, and then we have these enormous problems of human conflict and injustice and war, and we try to solve them while ignoring this other problem. So, 
I think finally the, the little bit of light is filtering through the massive wall of denial and disconnectedness that we all, uh, that's in the culture that we're raised in. So the main message is, from my point of view, is not to criticize and blame and shame other people. The problem is we've all been wounded. We've all been raised in a society where we've been required from the time we're little infants to participate in these rituals. Eat, meals are rituals. And anthropologists understand that the main way any culture transmits its values is through rituals. And so when we're eating meat, we're not just, and dairy products, we're not just eating these foods that are toxic, we're eating attitudes that are toxic. So little, so little kids in our society, we're all eating these toxic attitudes of domination and exploitation and disconnectedness and commodification of life and domination of the sacred feminine dimension of life to just use and exploit animals and use and exploit the female, especially female, uh, faculties and, and capacities and, and to break the, the bond between the mother and the child over and over again and to eat that. I mean, we're not just causing this, but then we're eating it. We're, we're forced to eat that as children. That shuts down our natural compassion, our natural intelligence, our natural empathy. And so we've got these blinders slapped onto us and we're just told to just eat this food and don't ask questions and trust the authorities and everything will be fine. And so we have this massive machine, an industrialized killing machine, which is connected to a massive war machine, which is connected to a massive medical pharmaceutical machine, which is connected to a massive chemical, agricultural, fast food, you know, I call it the military, industrial, meat, medical, pharmaceutical, medical, banking complex. So you have this big complex, and it gets very wealthy on this system. But what about us? You know, what about the animals? What about future generations? How can we ourselves create a world uh, of justice and peace and freedom. So the idea is, I think, to heal these wounds. So people who are not yet vegan are not the enemy. They've been wounded like us. We've just been able to heal the wounds a little bit. So we can kind of t wake up from the hypnotic trance and look around and go, oh, okay, now I understand a little bit what's going on here. And we can stop taking out our wallets and voting for misery and violence and causing it, and we can stop eating it, which is a smart thing to do. But other people who have, who have been so wounded that they haven't been able to make that connection yet, I, it's no point in getting mad at them. If someone's hurt, you don't kick them, right? You, you love them. Love them and, 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 and listen to them and be grateful for, the, for our, our position where we can share these ideas and for the freedom that we experience and the joy and love that we experience by being able to eat foods and support people who are um, bringing these wonderful uh, alternative, I, I didn't even like to call it an alternative, it's like real food. I mean, meat and dairy is really the alternative <laughs> to actually what we should be eating. So, um, so I think that's really the foundation of, the, of, of social justice, uh, su you know, success in these movements, is to, is to understand the history of our society, that we're raised in a culture that 10,000 years ago started owning animals as property for food, herding animals, creating a culture of war and patriarchy, of domination of women, of slavery, of the wealthy elite that dominates everything. We're born into that. We're wounded by it. It's going to destroy everything if we don't change it. It's not going to change from the top down. It's only going to change from the bottom up. We're the bottom. So we're getting together like this in a grassroots way to talk about these ideas, to create an alternative community. You know, when we go out of here, we go outside of the Olympia, and we see people eating meat, dairy products, and eggs, that's because they're part of, the, of a community that taught people to do that, right? We're, I ate meat and dairy for 22 years because of my community. So the only reason anybody eats these foods is because of the communities that we're raised in. So we're creating an alternative community of wisdom, compassion, care, and kindness, justice, hopefully. And, uh, and, th and this alternative community, I think, is really the foundation for a future of sustainability and freedom. And uh, so I want to thank all of you, really, for, for caring and for bringing this light to the world. And uh, I just look forward to the next couple of days here uh, at the VegFest because I think there's so much we can share and learn. And even what I'm saying now, I feel like in many ways we're just scratching the surface <clears throat> because there's a lot more to it, actually, than what I'm saying. But uh, I'll stop here, and I'd love to hear uh, what Brother James has to say, too, and then we can hear from you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Deep man. Deep man. 
Well, before I start and get into whatever comes out of my mouth, because I <laughs> didn't really know what this was going to be about today. Um, put your hand up if you've read Will's book again, The World Peace Diet. A few people. Okay. I've read a bunch of books on veganism and definitely 100% by far, that's my number one book on veganism. That's like the holy bible of veganism. The way it's written, I always say that the way it's written is like it's written by an extraterrestrial. That's what I always tell people. It's, it's a phenomenally written book and it, it, was, it laid the foundation for the way that I do things as well because I echo everything that Will just said there. You know, it's not about blaming and shaming people. They are just victims of the conditioning that has taught them that it is totally normal to love some animals like dogs and dolphins and whales and kill and eat pigs and cows and chickens and fish. It's the conditioning that tells us we need protein from meat, we need dairy for calcium, animals are killed humanely, etc, etc, etc. And so I see people exactly this, and I don't, I don't see them as, um, what, how did you describe them? As they're wounded or something? Yeah, I see them as victims. They're victims of conditioning just like we were as well. And yeah, that was a great analogy. You don't kick somebody who's already wounded and, you know, that, that's, I think that's a really good foundation for how you speak to people when you realise that they're not your enemy at all. The system is the enemy, the conditioning is the enemy and, and we are the victims of that system. Can I ask you a question, Will? And then I'll ask all you as well. Do you think that we can come out of this? You're talking about an alternate society. Do you believe that we can come out of this and actually see a vegan world? I think uh, that's a great question, James. Thanks, really. And um, the answer to that question, I think, is um, in a sense, it's a it's one of those questions where it, I think the the whole answer of it hinges on the idea of critical mass. That we human beings you know, have this massive inertia of ten thousand years of hurting animals and that we're seeing ourselves as superior and so now there's this awakening happening because I think we live in such a critical time when it's becoming so obvious that it's not enough to make a superficial change, that we need to make a deeper change if we're going to have a, a world for our, our children with climate destabilization and the destruction of the environment in so many ways, war, nuclear weapons kind of changes everything too. So personally I, I, I can only say I don't know. I mean, I do not know. I don't know if we're going to make it. <laughs> I mean, if we will have uh, a, a viable world for our children. But I do, I do feel I, I very strongly that if we f don't go vegan, we will not have a world for our children. I, I, I have a subchapter in the World Peace Diet called The Last Days of Eating Animals. You know, that these are the last days of eating animals one way or the other. Either we will, as you're implying, James, make the shift and go vegan as a society, which is incredibly positive to just think about the positive changes that would happen if we did that. Or if we fail to do it, human beings, we, there won't be, we, won't be, we won't be here anymore on this planet in, in numbers um, to be able to do it anymore. So this is, the, this is the last days of eating animals. I still feel that very strongly in eating animal foods. And I hope that we have a positive way. In a sense, it'd be nice if we had a positive way out of that. But I don't know. Uh, quite, quite honestly, I think um, the tempo of the acceleration of the vegan change is quickening in a beautiful way. And, and we see this as we travel. I mean, it's great to even go to places like China and see the explosion of veganism in China and all these new Chinese restaurants, I mean, vegan restaurants and vegan meetup groups and vegan products in China and Taiwan and Vietnam, Singapore and places, even in, um, in Dubai, I remember we were there not too long ago. There's, this is happening everywhere. So I think there is this groundswell and the mass media is ignoring it for the most part. I mean, it's coming through here and there, but for the most part, it's ignored. So I think we have to just keep feeding, <laughs> keep feeding the, uh, this positive movement in our own way and to find creative ways to do that. But I don't know uh, really if, if um, you, how it's all going to turn out. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's yeah. interesting, you know, like I'm always very optimistic about it, but it is interesting to realize that 
it's it's quite possible that we might not actually make it and like you said one way or the other it's the end of eating animals you know I think I don't know about you but kind of generally I just think we'll always be here we'll find a way humans will always be here but actually it's 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 a very there's a very you know a real possibility that that might not be the case which is something like amazing to think about really it's it's kind of mind-blowing to think about but I think as well that, I mean, what do you think? Like, put your hand up if you think that it's feasible to assume that we might see a vegan world one day. You, uh, All right. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> Some people are like, I, I think, don't know. I think if we didn't really, like, believe at least we'd make significant progress, we probably wouldn't try as hard, right? Or, or it mean maybe so much to us. I, I guess, and I don't know, for me personally... I fight like it's possible. I think we all probably do. Um, and, but it is, I think it is really important to remember that that might not be, it might not be the case. But if it, if it is possible and we can reach for it, then how we fight, how, you know, fight maybe isn't the best word, how we advocate, how we move forwards is so important. And you mentioned as well, Will, that it can't be a superficial change. Would you say that a superficial change would just be choosing almond milk instead of cow's milk. Would you say that that would be, even let's say someone went vegan, but is that, you know, doing the actions of being vegan, would you say that that would be superficial compared to actually generating the feelings of compassion to each other and respect and um, empathy? You know, would you say that th that comparatively, if, if you're just making choices at the supermarket that are vegan choices, obviously that's amazing and that could bring a lot of problems to an end, but would you say, compared to what we actually need, is that, would that be enough, do you think? I think um, behavior is very powerful. And I think sometimes we forget that behavior in many ways determines our consciousness. Consciousness also determines our behavior. You know, it's an interconnection. So, like in the work, I think both of us, the work we're doing, we, we try to emphasize consciousness, you know, try to, try to elevate our, or purify or deepen our understanding of the consequences of our actions so that we are more aware and more conscious and more mindful uh, when we take, if I take out my wallet and I pay for meat, dairy products, and eggs, what that's going to cause, and then from that understanding, then the behavior naturally flows. Um, but a lot of people will say, like, because um, many of you perhaps are aware that we have a, a very vibrant spiritual movement, right? We have a lot of people doing yoga, a lot of people meditating, a lot of people chanting and praying. Are they all vegan because they're doing that? Why not? <laughs> I mean, all these people are meditating and praying and doing yoga and raising their consciousness and, and, and all these things, but they're still eating animal foods. And so I think it's possible to, to raise our consciousness, but our behavior uh, in many ways ke can keep the consciousness at a certain level. So I think a lot of people who are on a spiritual path actually hit a plateau and cannot get any higher because they're still eating animal foods. They're stuck. But the eating animal foods is something that they don't want to question, so that they're kind of stuck there at that level. So I think changing behavior, you know, buying almond milk instead of uh, cow milk, for example, that can free up consciousness more than you think. And so I, when people, yeah, it used to be in my early days of being vegan, when someone said that they went vegan because of, they cared about their health, I thought, well, that's a very low-level motivation. They only care about their health. They only care about themselves. They don't care about animals, you know. Uh, that's too bad, you know. And in a sense, there's truth to that because if I really only do it for my health, there's a good chance that I'll, I'll cheat. You know, I'll have a little of this, have a little of that, you know. It's just, it's only about me. Um, so when the motivation deepens and I'm doing it for animals, then I'm not, <laughs> not going to go have some dairy because I know what it's causing. It's going to cause so much suffering to these beings. So that deeper motivation is very important. But I still think that I've seen this so often, someone will start out be, just buying the almond milk for their health, but now that they've made that behavior, behavioral change, their mind opens and they start to really listen 
to the inner voice of compassion and empathy and awareness, and they, their motivation does deepen. So I think our job, you know, for all of us really, is to encourage people to deepen their motivation so that the behavior flows from a deeper motivation, but they condition each other. Behavior conditions, I think, our consciousness. It's not doesn't just go the other way around. And if we change our behavior, very often our mind will change also. So just to get somehow help people to, to make the change, whatever the reason, and then, and then by our example uh, to be the, the voice. And I think one other thing I want to not fail to mention, because this is something that took me about 35 years to figure out <laughs> of being a vegan. I was always telling people, you should do this, and you should do this, and you know, I was trying to get to change them. And uh, I, 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 more and more I'm realizing that Ultimately, really, when you come right down to it, how many people can I actually change? Really, just one. You know, I used, I used to give lectures saying everybody should try to be a millionaire. You know, not get a million dollars, but, but get, get a million people to go vegan. <laughs> you know, try to get a million people. You know, try to make a million people go vegan. You know, change a million people. But I think, you know, in a sense, I love that. But to me, it more, it's about planting seeds effectively. I can't, I can't change other people, but I can change myself so that I'm living what veganism is, which is love. It's a love for others, love for, it's caring. It's this caring. We, we're vegan because we care about animals, right? We care about the earth. We care about our loved ones. We care about the future. We care about hungry people. We care about slaughterhouse workers. We care about, you know, the, the future generations. It's all about caring. And so, if we, if we understand that, I think then we can uh, realize that in a way, the best way to bring this message to other people is to develop that quality within myself. So, more and more, I see that we have. For me, it's important to get a, beyond that idea that veganism is a goal in and of itself. It's just, it's like there's this continuum or an adventure of life. We start. We're eating meat and dairy. We're eating the usual food, and then maybe we're vegetarian. Then maybe we're vegan. And then we think, oh, we're vegan. Okay, we're done. You know, we're perfect now. We're vegan. I mean, nothing else. I mean, I mean I'm better than anybody else. I'm a vegan. <laughs> They're all non-vegan. I'm a superior person. <laughs> you know, we have this idea that, you know, we're, we're evolved and they're not evolved. But people feel that, you know, if I'm speaking to someone who's not a vegan, I'm like, well, don't you know this? And can't you be, you know, a little more compassionate? And they're like, you know, it's like, it's terrible in a way. I mean, I wouldn't want someone coming up to me and like, I'm, the, I'm this in, in, inferior thing and I should be more like them. I'd like, get out of here. You know, leave me alone. This is ridiculous. I, I you know, get out of here. I mean, there's this basic feeling that I'm going to try to change other people to come up to my level. And so, I, I think the, the best thing is if we can just live what veganism actually is as respect and kindness. We have respect and kindness for cows and pigs, you know, respect and kindness for human animals, for, for their situation. And then just use, always use I statements. You know, I, instead of saying you, 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 you know, it's like I, I, I. Like I, I think this is the, this is the secret weapon, really. I mean, if someone said, Someone asked me, like, if you only have, you know, 30 seconds, you're in the elevator, you know, you only have 30 seconds, what would you say, you know? And I think this is it, something along these lines in, in your own terms, but just something like, gosh, you know, I'm so grateful that I realized that the only reason I was eating animal foods was because I was just following orders. And now I realize that those orders were not in my best interest, I'm not doing it anymore, and it's great. That's it, don't say anything more. Because you've just planted a, a seed at a very deep level, I think. It's kind of like goes in. Because nobody wants to just be a bio-robot, you know, just fulfilling a program, you know, eating the food that they were told to eat. Because people know, I think intuitively people know it's not a good idea to eat meat and dairy. So just say, gosh, I realize that. I'm not doing it anymore. It's great. And then just let go. Like the Bhagavad Gita says, you know, don't be attached to the fruit of your actions. Just plant the seeds and let go. And the person will forget you, they won't remember anything, but they'll go vegan, and, and it won't be beca it'll be because a little bit of you, you know? <laughs> but not to think, I want to make people go vegan. I think the, the irony is, the more I try to make people go vegan, the more they resist, the more I don't try to make people go vegan, the more they go vegan, right? They just, because I just, we just share our perspective and we're in our gratitude that we discovered this. I'm so grateful I just figured this out. It's fantastic. And then you're not, we're not threatening him, we're not criticizing him, we're not saying, oh, you should do this, you should do that. We're actually offering the, the possibility of something that's beautiful. And then let go. 
the best thing is letting go. We have a hard time letting go because we think, oh my God, but all those animals are suffering. I've got to, it's my fault that they're still suffering. <laughs> I'm not a good enough vegan. I've got to change everybody. I've got to be like James and be silent, not say anything for a whole year so they pay attention to me when I stop talking again. <laughs> but no, but anything we can do, I think, to live this in our own creative way is a beautiful example because we only have, you know, 50 years or 80 or 100 years on this planet. So... Might as well use every day as best we can to, for this message. Absolutely, man. That was, was what? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So to back it up a little bit, <laughs> I, I, what I was trying to get at as well is that um, going vegan is, like, like what you just said, it's a start. It's a really good start because you've stopped your contribution to the violence. But in a way, it did resonate with me when you said that, that when you were talking about superficial changes because that just changing your hand movement at the supermarket on in a way is a superficial change and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said the means we use must be as pure as the ends we seek so we're not we're not just looking for a world in my opinion where people are just making superficial changes and just going like this we want a, a real deep shift we want a shift in people's compassion and understanding of each other and the amount of respect raised there's a really good buddhist quote you've probably heard it it's the consumption of meat extinguishes the seed of great compassion and like you said as well some people they go that direction initially for health because they can't feel for the animals because they're eating these animal products and it's like a blockage in a way. But when you stop putting those products of violence into your body, you might not have felt for the animals at first, but maybe it does give you another, um, like, a, like an opportunity to actually start feeling. And we all have an opportunity to, to do more than just this. You know, it's so easy to think that you're that better than everybody who's not vegan vegan. It's so easy to get angry at the situation. It's so easy to blame the slaughterhouse workers and to, you know, um, sh blame and shame people. That's easy, man. You know, that doesn't take you to, to step up your level at all. You being angry, you blaming and shaming, that's low level stuff. But if we're talking about a deep shift, if we're going by what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, that the means we use must be as pure as the ends we seek, then we should all be trying to spread the love, come from a place of love, generate the qualities that we want other people to start feeling towards the animals. So we don't get the world that we're looking for, which is full of love, full of compassion, full of respect. We don't get that world if we're not generating those qualities ourselves and showing other people how it's done. Because I think that, you know, you can, like you said as well, you can do all this spiritual work, you can meditate, you can yoga, you can breath work and whatever, but you'll pause at a point if you're still consuming animal products. But I'd also say that it goes for the vegans too. You stop eating animal products, cool. You'll get to a point, that's great, but that's really not the end goal. Just because you're vegan, we can all be better humans. We can all generate more of these positive qualities in ourselves and less of the the negative ones, less of the blaming and shaming, less of the guilt and all these kinds of things like that. And I think that when we do that, it's in my experience personally, when we don't just let someone bring, let's say we're having a conversation with somebody and they're trying to bring us down and they're being argumentative and they are being maybe even aggressive or any of these things, it's, it's again, it's easy to go down to that level and have a fight back and forth. But if we're trying to pave the way for this world that we really want to see, then going down to that level and having these arguments and this blame and shame back and forth and being right and oh, I'm right, and that isn't actually the way to get there. That's not the path to get there. That would be the superficial path. You know, and I think we can, we can strive for more. Each one of us can strive for more. And that might mean you do some meditation or it might mean you work on yourself if you have certain issues, anger issues or whatever. But this is all, this is all helping. This is all part of creating the world that we want to see. It's, and, and to see that world, who's going who's gonna to lead the way? You know, The best people to lead the way are the vegans who've done the work because we've covered both bases. 
we've covered both bases. We'll get help from the people over here who haven't gone vegan but have done a lot of spiritual work, for example, to use those words. But if we can, if we can do both, if we can do that work and be vegan, then our, our credibility is so strong and our message is delivered in such a powerful way. And that's how we'll really create a significant change. Another quote that Dr. Martin Luther King said, is that love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. And that's really what we're trying to do. I'm not, I'm not trying to make enemies. Like, there's already enough hate in this world. There's already enough anger. There's already enough aggression. You know, we should be trying to increase the peace in, in, all, in every conversation, in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. Going vegan is in the actions. That's one part of it, though. You know, let's also increase the peace in our minds. Let's also increase the peace in our interactions. And all, all of this counts to contributing less negativity to the world and more of the good things. And I probably read this something like this in your book. I don't know if it's in there, but I have this idea that it's a big collective consciousness. It's a big collective thing, you know. You, let's say you're in a, in a room with somebody and you have a big fight and then you're quiet, but then someone walks in and they feel that energy. That's because there's some energy in that room. Energy is a real thing. You know, it's everywhere. And then we look at this world full of violence, you know, billions of animals every day. It's full of violence. And it's not just the killing, though. It's, it's all the things I just mentioned. It's the words, it's our thoughts, it's all of this stuff. So... The less animals being killed, the less violence in the air. Great, that's a good start. And we'll all just start to be a little less violent because the collective consciousness of us, that's just the way we'll go, right? It'll just be how we start. We all start to feel a little different, like this blanket of violence is starting to lift a little bit. So that's, that's one great way. But we can also take this blanket off faster with, everything, with all the other things that we can do as well with how we treat people when we talk to them, with how we respect even a slaughterhouse worker. We don't respect the sin, we respect the sinner, the victim, you know? And, and all of these things just is adding more of the things in this world that will change this collective vibe on this planet and make it just that, just that much easier for people to shift and to change and to feel the things that they need to feel in order to be inspired to actually become more ethical, caring humans. That's what I think. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. I think, um, and, and one thing I think that ties into what you're saying that I think is really important to remember that and I think we all know this in our bones. I think most of you are vegans. You, you, most of you vegans, like you consider yourself, okay. So this basic um, that energy, like the energy dynamic, um, when you have a crime that's committed publicly, there's always three roles that are enacted. Um, I write about this actually in the World Peace Diet. There's the, a victim, right? Someone is getting, say, mugged or robbed or something. There's a perpetrator. Someone is doing the action of, of violence against this person. And then there's the third role is the bystander or the witness, right? They're, they're, they're the ones walking by and seeing it, right? So in that situation, the, the victim is hoping that the bystander will do something to help, right? To, you know, say, stop, I'm going to call the police, or, you know, don't do that. And somehow interfere to help them. The perpetrator, though, is hoping that the bystander will look the other way, won't say anything, will pretend everything is fine, and just ignore the whole situation. So in the situation we have today, we have literally billions of victims, right, these animals who are being abused and killed for food and other products. We also, though, have millions, actually billions of perpetrators, all the people taking out their wallets and paying for meat, dairy products, and things. That, that's actually the actual act of perpetration is not the slaughterhouse worker. It's actually the, the housewife buying the meat. <laughs> I mean, that's where, or the, whoever it is, you know, somebody ordering meat and dairy, that's when the actual act of killing happens is, uh, is, is taking out the wallet and paying for it. So 
in this situation, we have millions or billions of both victims and perpetrators. The perpetrators, of course, are also, as we we're saying, they're also victims in a sense. I mean, the only reason that they're killing these animals is because they themselves have been wounded and taught that they have to do this. But to remember this, that the only ones with any power in this situation, the only one with any power to stop this horrible, massive slaughter are the bystanders. And there's only, the only bystanders are vegans. In other words, the vegans are the only ones that have any power to actually heal this situation that is consuming and destroying our planet, that's destroying any possibility of our children having a world. So I think that's why we vegans rightly feel a big sense of responsibility to do something. You know, when we, that, that's a, don't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of times we say, yeah, like people say, well, you know, the videos that you see on YouTube of the undercover violence to cows and pigs and chickens for meat, dairy products and eggs and fishes, we see those videos, but who's watching those videos? Pretty much, I would say 99% of the people that watch those videos are vegans. You know, people are eating the food, and they're not, I'm not gonna watch that. I wanna enjoy my bacon. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna watch it. So, so we're watching it, we're aware of it. We're the bystanders. So it's really incumbent upon us to be skillful in our communication with the, with the perpetrators so that they actually stop what they're doing. And so I think as James said, you know, we can be very self-righteous and it's easy to get angry at them and yell at them and so forth, but if it doesn't have any effect, what good is it? So that's why it's so important, I think, we really do as vegans, when, we, when, when the light bulb goes on and we wake up out of the cultural trance of, of eating animal foods, we become actually uh, in a very, um, we, we were, we're in a very powerful and very important position on this planet. We're a small minority, but we're not engaged in the Holocaust, literal killing, whole killing of animals. And so now it's incumbent upon us, I think, to take seriously our own psychological, spiritual, intellectual, emotional development so that we're embodying what veganism is so that our words will have weight with people. So that when we speak, people will take us seriously because they'll feel that there's congruence. There's congruence between our words. You know, what I've realized over 37 years of being a vegan, it's not that much what we say. People say, well, what, what should we say? How do we craft the perfect sentence? How do we make the perfect string of words that will just hit the magic button and maybe they'll go, oh, I'm vegan now. You know? <laughs> how do we, it's not really, it's not that. It's actually how we say it. It's actually who we are when we say it. It's, 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 it's our being is speaking. And human beings, we are very, we're very telepathic. We're very intuitive. We can read energy, we do. I mean, even wounded people, we can all do that. And so I think it's so important, uh, as James was saying, to, to make the efforts in, 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 as vigorously as we can, to take time every day. This is, you know, what I do anyway, is every morning, I think how we start our day is important. You know, wake up every morning and just cultivate a sense of gratitude for another day to do something be something, to grow, to learn, to somehow contribute to the healing of the world, to somehow be part of the solution rather than being part of the problem and, and look forward to opportunities uh, to bless others. And, and uh, realizing that every day could be the last day. We don't know how long we're gonna live. I mean, we're all on this planet for a sh relatively short amount of time. Every day is precious. You know, we, we, I think r understanding that uh, whatever the future will be, whether we make it or not, doesn't really, for me, doesn't change anything. Even if I knew that in 20 years global warming is going to wipe everything out, I would still, every day I'd go and try to spread the vegan message anyway. <laughs> because, you know, what else is there to do? It's like, there's this planet, you know, it's, it's, an, it's beautiful, beautiful. How many of you have noticed how beautiful the earth is? You've, right, you've noticed? It's beautiful. <laughs> this beautiful earth, it's so beautiful and it's, life is abundant and and spectacular, and here we are, we're on this planet, we're born into a culture, really of violence, of domination, exploitation, oppression, economic competition, uh, injustice. But we, it's probably, we came here maybe because we heard a calling, like, like Earth was saying, help, help, you know, <laughs> come here. <laughs> so we come, and it takes us maybe 10 or 20 or 30 years to wake up out of the programming and we go, oh yeah, that's why I came here. And then we can roll up our sleeves and start working. And so now we're here, and so now we, every day, do what we can 
And it doesn't mean that just because we're doing our job that suddenly there's no challenges. There's still challenges, there's still um, you know, uh, opportunities to grow, but it does mean that our life has meaning. There's a sense of authenticity. You know, we're living our life, our purpose. And I think that's the one thing that we have. And what we do to animals that's so devastating is we steal their purpose. These animals have a purpose. What are we, the, the most, the greatest crime we commit against these animals is that we don't allow them to fulfill their purposes. We thwart it. We just imprison them. We steal everything from them. We steal their purpose. So how, so, so what is our purpose? That's the thing. I, when we travel to colleges and universities and I ask young people, what is your purpose? They look at me like, I never thought of that before. Do I have, I mean, my purpose is to consume. I know that. I'm supposed to buy products. <laughs> this is what we're taught. That's not a purpose. So the whole idea is we, can, we have a purpose. So we have a, a precious life. We have another day. And to, even though I can't change you or you or you, I can make my own life be more of an example. So when I plant the seeds, it goes deep. And that can have a big impact but not to, get, not to have the ego involved. Just, just do the best we can. So I, th I really recommend how we start the day in a, in a positive way. And then for me, what's really helpful is to connect with nature, connect with creativity. I always play the piano for a while. I always go out, take a swim, you know, connect with nature, go barefoot or something. And, and then also meditate. I mean, just in a sense, I don't mean any, necessarily any particular practice, but to... Um, to quiet the mind and listen internally, to connect with the dimension of consciousness that's not bound by uh, concepts and, and self-identity and, and, and uh, images. You know, these, all these images, to just liberate consciousness for a few moments and just be. Because what we are, actually, I think if we can get a glimpse of it, that what we are is like the sky. It's, we're infinite, eternal consciousness that was never born and will never die. We are, this is our true nature, actually. And if we can get a glimpse of that and, and just remember, we're, we're raised in a society of materialism. Animals are sold by the pound. They're just objects. So we, we're taught that this body is all I am. This is just the thing, this piece of meat. And we look at other people like it's just a piece of meat. I like that one. I don't like that one. What color is that one? What size is that one? What sex is that one? You know, you know, we have to look beyond that to see the beings. That's what, we, that's what veganism is. It's seeing a cow as a being. That's the beauty. And, and we can see ourselves as a being, an infinite, eternal being, and, and with respect. And so if we can connect with that every morning, then our activism comes out of that. And we're... And we're communicating at that level with other people. So we're taught, we're, we're, when we talk to people, we talk to the being, the eternal being, and that liberates them. That's a very, I think, very uh, helpful because I've, 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 you've probably met the, you know, people that say, well, I, I'd like to go vegan, but I never could because my husband, he'll never go vegan, and I've got to please him. Well, if, if I think of my partner like he's never going to go vegan, then I'm holding him in a prison. <laughs> I have this concept that he'll never change. So if we, if we can liberate other people and see that everyone can change, everyone can change. Some of the greatest animal rights activists are former ranchers, you know, <laughs> you thought would never change. So to liberate ourselves, take time to quiet our minds, and then address that in what we see in ourselves, address that in other people, and see that in, in other people. And I think when we get to the end of our life, whenever that is, and we never know when that will be, that we will have at least live some of our days well. And what else can we do on this earth, really? So, thank you. Thank yeah, you very bro. much. That's a Respect. <laughs> so true. What he said. Um, I want to just say two things about what you just said. Oh, the first one was, you know how you said it is not just what you say. It's not just the facts that you've learned. It's how you say it. It's delivery, but then you said something I've never thought, I've never heard before, never really thought of before. It's not just what you say, it's not just how you say it, it's also who you are when you say it. It's who you are when you say it. That is so important, man. You know, it's, that's why being the best version of you that you can be is, it matters so much. Because if you have all the facts in the world, but you aren't, modeling that behavior, you aren't that person, it is not going to be congruent and it is not going to be as effective as what it could have been. Um, and just on a bit more of a practical level, 
when you were talking about you wake up, you do your gratitude, this and that, you ask people, what's your purpose? How, how my, all of my activism got started, how it all began was from me deciding on my life purpose quite seriously, sitting down and thinking about it and deciding what kind of contribution I wanted to make. And I, I have it set out, I can tell you exactly what it is. My goal in life, I am here to be an instrument of truth and peace and to contribute to making this world a kinder, more peaceful place for us all to live. That is it. I've repeated that in my head a thousand times. Once I had that purpose, which in my opinion is step one, if you want to do something, if you want to start making a difference, which every single person can and should, because we are, like you said, we are the ones that can really put out the message that can save so many lives and save this world. I know that sounds big, but that's because it is. It is the biggest message. And so first step one is realize, you know, create some sort of purpose for your life. You can go through and just wing it, but if you have a purpose, then during your days, when things come to you, when opportunities arise, when experiences happen, you can ask yourself the question, is this in alignment with the purpose I've created for myself? And your yes or no response will dictate the actions that you take. Every time you say, yes, it is, and you move closer in that direction of living your purpose, you start to make more and more of a significant impact because you're living that goal. You're living it. It's, it's becoming actual, and it's happening. Step one is that. Step two is when these experiences happen, when you start seeing opportunities where you think, oh, maybe this is part of it. Maybe this is one of those moments where, for me, it was, hey, maybe I could do a vow of silence for a whole year. You know, obviously there was so much in me and all my friends and family that were saying, no, don't do that. But I asked myself the question, is this in align with my purpose? And I thought, it could be. Yeah, I think it might be. If I do this, I could help be an instrument of truth and peace and contribute to making this world a kinder place. So why wouldn't I say yes? So step one is make the purpose. Step two is be aware for opportunities when they arise. And step three is don't let fear dictate your actions. So I could have been like, oh, nah, man, I don't want to put myself out in the public eye. What if I can't make it? What if it's not effective? What if this? What if that? It was all in my head. I, I was thinking all of those things, but I didn't let fear dictate my actions. The answer was yes, this is in alignment with my purpose. So I'm just going to take a leap of faith and I'm just going to have a crack at it and see what happens and maybe I'll fall and maybe it won't be good but there's no good reason for me not to do it other than I'm, I'm afraid. That's not a good reason. You know, we've got we to gotta rise above that stuff and we've got to take risks. We've got to, you know, it's an it's a extreme time. It's a drastic time which calls for drastic actions. So, yeah, some things that you might think might aid you in contributing to this world, making it a better place and becoming more aligned with your purpose that you create, they might make you afraid and they might seem big and you might feel uncomfortable but I would say feel the discomfort and do it anyway if you're uncomfortable that's probably a good sign that you are going to grow and become a better version of yourself and actually make a difference so create your purpose be observant when opportunities arise and say yes to life don't let fear dictate your actions thank you thank you Jim <laughs> all right well it's been so beautiful. The time has just gone flying by. I can't believe it's already been an hour. It seemed like it's only been five minutes. But uh, we're just getting the word from uh, Sir Tim that uh, it's time for us to uh, go on to the next, uh, the next thing. We're happy to... I have some copies of the World Peace Diet if anyone wants to. I'm happy to sign copies. And we're happy to answer questions maybe outside so the next group can come on in here. Much love to you all. Go forth and multiply the message. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And Sunday will be here as well. Thank you. Much Thanks, love. everybody. Thank you.